Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. Today we've got a review for you of Nobody Saves the World. This was written for us by Asdin over at Grinning Wolf Games, so thank you very much to you, Asdin. From the developers of Guacamele comes a new tale of dungeon crawling RPGs. Play as a featureless nobody that can transform into many different forms, each with their own unique gameplay mechanics. Are you embarking on a worldly adventure, or should this be played by absolutely nobody? Well, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now, let's find out. You begin your adventure as Nobody, a pale androgynous humanoid who wakes up without any memories or pants for that matter. Soon after, you find a powerful magic wand allowing you to change into many different and fantastic forms. The world has been consumed by calamity, and with the great hero wizard gone missing, it's up to you to save the world. There is a lot of humour in this game and the narrative was enjoyable enough without being too overbearing. The humour won't be to everyone's taste, but the team, Drinkbox, have managed to add some jokes here and there, whether coming from the inhabitant speech or via visual gags. In terms of the gameplay, this is a top-down dungeon crawling RPG that will see its protagonist transforming into different beings in order to use their powers. Leveling up is achieved a bit differently in this game, rather than obtaining experience points from defeating enemies, you'll instead be tasked with carrying out a number of quests. These start off as simple jobs such as stomping on enemies 10 times and this particular quest will reward the player with formed points that increase the grade of that form and unlock further abilities. The player will also receive experience points that will increase the protagonist level. They will also reward the player with wands and these are critical for progression in the story. They unlock doors to dungeons in a similar manner to how stars unlocked a world in Super Mario 64. Forms are unlocked by increasing their rank through multiple use and by completing the required quests. There is a form tree in the menu that works as a guide to what forms are available and how to unlock them. Each form is unique and comes with specific skills and passive abilities. As you progress through the game, your character will be able to mix and match these abilities and passive skills. This means you can turn into a rat that sprays water and fires a barrage of arrows if you so wish. Your character has a health gauge and a mana gauge, with the latter depleting whenever you use a skill. This can be refilled by attacking enemies or by breaking various objects that appear in the environment. The world is pretty big and whilst each region can be reached from the start, certain areas are shut off either by a gate or by the player lacking the ability to traverse an environmental feature such as water. Monsters will have their levels on display, giving the player an invite into the zone or taken as a warning if your level does not exceed theirs. Combat is fun enough as you experiment with the different abilities that each form possesses to see which one works the best. It's not hard, but dying can happen swiftly if your character is suddenly surrounded. A dodge or parry mechanic would have probably benefited gameplay in order to manage the overwhelming task of defeating enemies, trying to change forms, and above all, trying to stay alive. There are four elements in this game, being sharp, blunt, light and dark. Some enemies will have a shield based on one of these elements and attacking with the same element will shatter it. This was a welcome mechanic as it broke the monotony of spamming the same attacks over again whilst getting the player to experiment with different forms and abilities. There are also normal quests given to you by NPCs. These can be straightforward such as carrying out a conversation or be that bit tougher such as killing all enemies except the leader. Your main quest will see you travelling into the big dungeons. These have set multipliers and buffs which had me grinding for a while before attempting. Even if you are at the right level, the multiplier remains in the dungeon and some can boost enemies health significantly. The standard dungeons have procedurally generated maps. Controls work well, but some of the mechanics within the game need some tweaking. There are over 14 forms in total, which can be selected via holding down the R button to bring up the selection wheel. The problem is pressing the button doesn't pause the game, nor does it slow down time, so you have to select the right form straight away. Furthermore, the selection wheel will only have a select few of the forms at any one time, and this makes swapping forms during these tense moments, which do occur more often than not, really hard to manage. In a game where you are encouraged to mix forms and defeat mobs of enemies, one would have expected to be able to have a few seconds of respite in order to change into a better fitting form. 
I found it was easier to change via the pause menu and I feel a good alternative would have been to have the option to map specific forms to certain buttons or have the selection wheel itself be customizable. I should mention that you can also play with two players via online or couch co-op. At the time of reviewing I did not get a chance to try either mode so I cannot comment on their performance and can instead just confirm their existence. Nobody Saves the World certainly offers some decent mechanics that help mix up the gameplay and with plenty of skills to unlock and upgrade this game will surely appeal to dungeon crawling fans. It can become a bit repetitive until a new form is unlocked and striving for a particular quest in order to rank up that form can become a tiresome task. Overall though gameplay gets 16 out of 20. The controls are easy to learn and use although some button mapping options would really have enhanced the gameplay and they score 17 out of 20. The world here is beautifully illustrated with cartoon characters and scenery which is very fitting to the story. There is a colourful mist in the air that makes all of the assets really pop plus there is a charm to the characters and the enemies. Special effects are fluid and effective particularly the transformation bolt that lands on the player and there are some great lighting effects added here which accompanied with the dynamic shadows make this interactive cartoon come to life. The font in some parts like the quest menus can be quite small and there is no option to increase the size. Furthermore the camera can feel extremely zoomed out in some sections of the game making it really hard to keep track of your character location especially amongst all of the chaos. The soundtrack in the game has a mixture of simple, funky and synth tunes which are catchy if a tad repetitive. The simple voice work includes comic screams and grunts and there are even sorcerer cats that mumble in meows before casting a spell. Visuals pop from the screen and include charm in abundance with the main downside being a difficulty to keep track of your character when pandemonium ensues. They score 16 out of 20. Audio fits the gameplay and the visuals very well, although it does get a touch repetitive at times and it scores 17 out of 20. Nobody Saves the World costs £22.49 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. It can be finished in about 10 to 15 hours but includes a New Game Plus mode and that local or online co-op option. Add to that the fact that it is brilliantly written, has crisp and clean visuals and a fun soundtrack and its retail price doesn't seem too steep. The need to grind at times may hamper the overall value to some and on balance it scores 17 out of 20. To conclude, Drinkbox have managed to create a completely different game from the one that made them the notorious studio that we know today. This is not only a bold move but it takes talented people to pull it off successfully. All of the signature humour and artistic presentation is here and it makes the experience much more enjoyable. The core gameplay is a lot of fun and it's always great to find a new form. It does suffer from some minor mechanical issues that can impact the pacing of combat and of story progression as a whole and whilst there are many forms to unlock at times it can feel as if the focus needed to rank one up is quite short lived because there is always another one that then needs your attention. If you love top down dungeon crawlers but want something with a bit more colour and satire for that matter this might be exactly what you are looking for especially if you do have a friend to play it through with. Nobody Saves the World gets a switch up score of 83%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. Another big thank you to Asdin for writing this one for us, please do check out his channel, there will be a link to it in the top pinned comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care and until next time, happy gaming.